Hi everyone, this is Allison with Safety Education Specialists, and I am still attempting to do my tourniquet tier list. This will be probably the 15th take that I have done today, which is October 4th of 2020. Um, I have been interrupted by everything. I've been interrupted by dogs, I've had Facebook notifications, and I've sent out a thing to people going, hey, don't message me right now because I'm recording, and they send back later, nice, thanks, I said not to message me. Thank you. Um, I've had reminders to renew my Norton, which I have no intention of doing. Sorry. Um, I've had other things pop up. Um, this has been fantastic. But let's see. Um, I'm going to make this a blooper reel at some point. I really will. I'm going to have to put together a blooper of all these things because this has been fabulous. But let's get into some tourniquets, shall we? So we are going to be talking about my tourniquet tier list. Now, these tourniquets that I'm going to discuss, first of all, all the pictures that you're going to see are pictures that I took of products that I actually own. I purchased these. I have used these. These are mine. So I do not take anything off of somebody else's website. Now I am going to be looking at various manufacturers websites because I do want to show you some things that are important. I do want to discuss these tourniquets and why they end up ranked where I put them. And I will leave a list and a, uh, of all my links down in the description box. So you can, of course, check those out. This video is probably going to be uh, two parts, if not three. So I'll be sure to put that as well in the description once I'm done with the entire series. But let's go into why I chose these tourniquets because you're looking at that and there's only six tourniquets there. We have the cat, the met, the rats, the recon, soft T wide, stat, and the SWAT T. So why did I pick these six? The criteria I used was I wanted to use tourniquets that I have had personally a lot of experience with. So tourniquets that I have trained on, uh, trained other people on, and used myself totaling of a minimum of 100 hours. For many of these, I have quite a bit more training time with them. Uh, there's a couple that I think I have taught classes on them once a week for probably the last 10 years. So some I have a lot more. But my minimum cutoff was 100 hours. So that means that there are going to be some tourniquets that do not make that cut. Uh, one of the most prominent ones that is not going to appear on this list is the RMT. That's the ratchet. And that was just approved by um, the Committee for Tactical Emergency Casualty Care, COTEC, uh, back in 2019. While I have one, while I have played around with it, and while I like it pretty much, you know, I have my opinion on it. Um, I haven't done a lot of student training on it. I haven't had clients who've wanted that one. So until I log in a lot of student training hours, I'm going to keep it off my list. But let's go into what criteria I use to determine where these tourniquets are going to place on my tier maker board. I looked for efficacy. Did it work? Does it work? That's pretty important with the tourniquet. You know, you want to stop your life threatening bleeding. It'd be really great if the tourniquet actually did that. That's a really big, big thing. It should be a pretty low bar to hit considering you're marketing yourself as a tourniquet, but uh, we'll see if these guys actually do that. Uh, ease of use. How easy is it for someone to use? Not just when we're having a great conversation in class, but if I'm putting you through a TECC and I'm putting the pressure on you and I'm kind of getting in your face and getting by your head and yelling at you and telling you to do things and things like that, well, are you still able to apply it or are you going to get flustered? I don't know. How fast can you apply it? How quickly do you get this thing out, on the limb, tightened down, secured, finished? Is it quick? Is it slow? Is it easy to comprehend? Does the application speed greatly increase with more time or does it say pretty consistent? How durable is it? Because the last thing you want is a tourniquet that's going to break on you. And there's one in particular, two actually, that I'm looking at for that. <clears throat> Not breaking is important. Uh, and is it affordable? Keep in mind, these tourniquets are tourniquets that are available to the general public. And even if they were exclusively for the military or exclusively for law enforcement, those agencies still have a budget. Okay? So you want to look at, are they cost effective? Particularly for the amount of good that they're going to do. So all these tourniquets that I'm looking at are available to the public. You can buy any of these, frankly, on Amazon or most other uh, websites. I am going to caution you, though, a little bit about uh, using Amazon. Make sure you're getting the genuine product, the one you're actually looking for, not just one that looks a lot like it. You know, I would never buy a tourniquet on Wish. Again, my opinion. 
don't give people any hate about this, okay? All right, so what are my tier rankings and why are they called what they're called? So at the absolute top, the best, the most fabulous, the most wonderful is something that is practically a tactical miracle. This is a tourniquet that is so wonderful. It ticks, if not all the boxes, it nearly ticks all the boxes. And even the box it doesn't tick, it's like half a tick. Okay. It's just about there because nothing in this world is going to be perfect. So we're getting just about to miracle level of tourniquetness. Tactically great means that it actually does what it's supposed to do. And it does it pretty well. It, again, ticks pretty much all the boxes. Maybe has half a tick on two of the boxes, but it's still good. And it's got some reasons why it's better than the bottom three. Tactical, if you're in this industry, you know what tactical is. Tactical is not cool. That's the guy or the girl or whomever who wants to go walk around in the pants of many pockets with a really big utility belt and the vest and the cap and the gloves. And the big boots. And he's got molly pockets and things and stuff. Uh, but he has never once, never once, been to a range. He's never once actually been in class because he already knows everything. Just so you know. I'm using he as a universal here. Don't get mad. Don't come for me. Um, but <laughs> tactical, no. I, I personally would not use a tactical. If it's tactical, it gets thrown out. Wishes it was tactical means it's worse than tactical. It would love to, as it aspires to tactical. It's not there. It's not even close. Please let me bleed out means exactly that. Please just don't even touch me with that thing. Whatever it is, don't touch me with it. Just let me die. All right, let me bleed out. I can do more with gauze than I can do with this thing. And yes, there is one that I'm thinking of. Do you know what it is yet? <laughs> you will by the time we're done. All right. So let's hop in, shall we? The first one that I'm going to talk about. Oh, let's talk about everybody's favorite. This is the one that everybody talks about. Everybody loves it, sort of. Everybody uh, knows who this one is. Um, for instance, you know, use the brand name Kleenex for facial tissue. Uh, some people use this almost in the same way when they talk about a tourniquet. That is the CAT, the Combat Application Tourniquet. And we'll pop on over to their website. Let's see what they have to say for themselves over here on CAT. Now, a couple of things going for it. It's fairly affordable. $29.99, they do uh, do bulk pricing. So if you're with an agency, you can get a really good deal on this. It is recommended uh, with the current uh, COTECC Cotec guidelines. Uh, so it is good and it is constantly evolving. We're now on Gen 7 of this sucker. They're always making improvements, which is a good thing. I'd like to tell you on here, it's the official tourniquet of the U.S. Army, proven to be 100% effective in including blood flow. I haven't seen that report, but you know what? I'm going to take their word for it. I've seen the NAVC report, but that was from 2007 or 2009. I've got to check. But either way, I've seen NAVC. I have not seen the U.S. Army's actual report. I've seen what people have said the report has said, but that's okay. Single routing buckle, that's a good idea because um, that was a little bit hard. Uh, the red tip technology, that is the tab that actually um, allows you to see it, which is a good thing. It's a lot easier to find. It's great. It's classic for a reason. It truly, truly is. You'll know it's an actual cat because it will say on here, cat tourniquet. By the way, if you buy a tourniquet and it has a picture of a cat or the outline of a kitty cat, that's not actually a cat. So just an FYI. Here's my thing with the cat. And let me find my Gen seven. Nope, that is not it. I have all my tourniquets over here in one big massive tourniquet pile. Again, this is like take 47 of the day. I'm going to make you guys a blooper reel because it's fantastic. But this is my actual cat. This guy has been used a lot. Again, he's really popular and I have a whole bunch of blue ones that I use just for training, but this is my personal cat. Um, and I bet as you can tell, because he's all messed up, I don't actually carry him. I don't. Um, and I'll show you why I don't. This could be just my own quirk, my own thing. But 
some of the weak points of tourniquets, particularly like this, is this back piece. So this back piece is plastic. And something that really annoys me is when it's a very thin little piece of plastic, which it's very thin, and I can twist it a lot. Now, they've gotten better. To be fair, they have stiffened up that piece. But here's the other thing. I don't like that the windlass clasp that's on here is so easy to bend out like this. Okay? I am just using my two fingers and I'm able to pull it that far out. And I'd be willing to bet that I could probably snap it. I don't want to snap it because I don't want to have to buy a new one. But I could probably snap it. I like the improvements they made to the windlass. This bit here, this ribbing is wonderful. This is so great for gripping. I like that they bulked up the center piece so that where you actually tighten it, I can't bend it, which is really good because there were some prior generations that I could bend. So that is good. This was one of the weak parts um, on it. But for ease of use, this thing is amazing. It's easy to thread. It's easy to tighten. It's easy to twist. It's easy. Is it effective? Yeah, it is effective. Even in the NAVC, it was at uh, just o it was over 90% for upper extremity, and it was a bit over 75 or 80%, if I recall correctly, for lower extremity. Uh, so it was really good. It did its job. So the cat, it does what it's supposed to do. It's a good tourniquet. It's a solid, solid choice. So this one, I'm going to put this one down into I think for brand availability and for being able to be recognized it's got to stay at least at the tactically great. I don't know if I'm going to put it under practically a tactical miracle because I don't like how bendy that clasp is. Now, I know this is my opinion and some people are going to say, well, oh, listen to her. Who's she hating on people, et cetera, et cetera. Listen, I admire everybody who has taken their idea and brought it to market, and especially Kat, because they have done so much. They have improved so much, and they've done so much for emergency response. They're fantastic. I wish I could make that kind of an impact, but there's my criticism. Can you please strengthen up? the windless clasp, because that part there, if I can bend it with my index fingers and almost snap it in half, that's a problem. Okay, let's just admit it. That's a problem. So let's go to a different style. Let's play with these a little bit. I'm going to go down here to my SWAT T. That's this friend right here. So my SWAT T, the stretch, wrap, and tuck. This guy, oh, the design is simple. It's basically a gigantic band of rubber. Um, it has a really good idea on it. The instructions are right on there. You know, you wrap it until it's all the way open, then you tuck it in and you keep wrapping and tucking and wrapping and tucking, tucking, which is great. It's awesome. Here's the good things about this, the really good things about this. It's cheap, especially when you compare it to some other uh, tourniquets that are out there. It is not an expensive piece of equipment. Anybody can pretty much afford to get this thing, okay? It's great. Um, let's see if I get a price off the actual SWAT T. Here we go. Ooh, tactical black. That makes it even better, I think. I like tactical black. Oh, you're just going to give me a third of the cost? Okay, well... It actually is, quite frankly. It is very, very, very inexpensive. Um, but <sighs> here's the thing. It's not really that great compared to some of the other ones or that effective compared to some of the other ones when you compare. Um, it's just not. It's more difficult to use because it's very difficult to stretch, wrap, and tuck on yourself. It's 
especially your non-dominant hand, you're not going to be doing very well with it. I personally like to have a tourniquet with a windlass. I like to have that extra bit of tightening when I have expended all of my strength possible trying to tighten down the initial uh, band. So for me, it doesn't really work. Now, it has some other good uses. As a pressure dressing, this is fantastic. Okay, you can wrap this thing around. Imagine you're in a first aid class and you're doing roller gauze over some flat gauze. Imagine you put this on there and you did your tightening down like, oh, yeah, that's great. That's fabulous. This is really good for people who are in an environment where they have to pack something that will work, but they don't have a lot of space. Or if you really operate under the ounces equal pounds and pounds equal pain principle, if that's how you're going through your day, this thing is really great. It's super light. It's compact. It's easy to carry. So it does have some really, really great benefits. I will say that. However, I'm sticking this one here into my tactical. And here's why. It is not as effective, in my opinion, as a windless tourniquet. It's very slow to apply. If you try to apply a SWAT T very quickly, instead of the band lying mostly flat, it's going to start to curl up and you're going to get indents. Those indentations are exceptionally painful. And again, in my opinion, when you indent over a wound, because you like to have everything flat, because uh, you don't want there to be pressure points, you don't want there to be, um, you know, lumps and bumps in your wound care, because when you get that, now you get blistering and you get other problems. So, no. Very good for affordability. Mostly effective, but the ease of use, application speed, not my favorites. So I'm going to pop that one down to Tactical. Also because in my own experience, I have seen quite a lot of people who have been looking like that stereotypical Tactical person walking down the street. Thank yes, I love Costco. I confess. I have seen these people walking down the street looking all Tactical and they love to brag about how they got their SWAT tee. And they love to put that in their camping pack. Great, fine, whatever. Okay, you're tactical. Admit it and love it. So that is going to be the end of part one. <laughs> so, ooh, all right. This may end up being three. I'm going to keep it away from being four. I'm not going to let that happen to you guys. So I'm going to stop this recording right here. And we're going to pick up in just a little bit with part two of my tourniquet tier list. <laughs>